to recognize McGregor was six feet off the lane. He's no threat to score there. Let him catch the ball. Don't pick up a foolish foul. McGregor replaced by Miles. Kamard replaces Abuo. Lee Kamard, one for three from the floor, two points. And McGregor has to come back on the floor because that was, in fact, the 17 foul, so he's shooting a one and one. Gavin McGregor, a senior, 72% from the line. Injured most of last year, coming back. He's what I call a middle reliever. He comes in to just eat up some minutes, like a middle reliever would eat up some innings to give Miles a breather. Southpaw hits the first. Wake Forest, number six in the country. How good are they, or how good could they be come NCAA tournament time? They're a top 10 team right now, no question about it. If they get better point guard play, they could go to the Final Four. They're that talented. But they are, as you mentioned at the outset, a young team. Starting lineup of a freshman, a pair of sophomores, and a pair of juniors. Smith with the kick, Williams, floater, too strong, Tavernari to Fredette. We all know about Tavernari as a shooter. One of the things he's done more consistently this year is get on the defensive glass. Emery from long range. Seven for Emery to tie it at 39. Now, I'm not real smart, but three is better than two. And right now, the twos are going to the team in black, and the threes are going to the team in the white uniforms. Johnson spinning. Oh, what a tough shot. The knuckleball goes. The Barishnikov jumper. Dead, guarded by Teague. Emery again. Teague hits the pedal, splits the defenders, and lays it up. That little stutter step freezes the defender. He's got that change of gears in his game. Good guards have a change of pace, a change of gears. Teague possesses that. Miles. Spins, swatted, no basket. Johnson. Fouled on his way to the hoop. Emery wasn't set. Teague to the hoop. Wake Forest, BYU. Good one in Provo. Hilton Honors bonus points. Real value from your friends at Hampton. The Mountain West Conference online store is the place to get all of your officially licensed MWC championship gear and team apparel. The Mountain West Conference online store is where MWC fans get everything they need. of 2008, a remarkable year culminates in a trip to New Orleans. With conference pride and national respect on the line, their undefeated season is put to the test. Now in part two, follow the Utes as their journey continues for a behind-the-scenes look at the team as they take the field for their final showdown and represent the Mountain West in the Sugar Bowl. Battle on the Bayou, 
Tuesday at 9.30 on the Mountain. Welcome back to the Marriott Center in Provo. Rich Cellini, Dave Bullwinkle here on the Mountain. Wake Forest with a four-point lead. Want to remind you to stay with us here at halftime. The gentlemen in the studio will have a preview of the Lobos and UNLV. And the Fletcher file, Bill Doman, Marty Fletcher, at our studios in Denver. They said they thought that might be Bill and Marty right there, but I don't think so, Dave. You know, they wanted this to be a whiteout with all the T-shirts. I think that's going a little overboard. Those guys are the two BYU fans of the night. I tell you what, the people who camped out, temperatures overnight were in the 20s. And around the Marriott Center, it's a little bit like a wind tunnel. That wind comes in off the mountains and swirls around. Brave, brave young people. Johnson going to the line right now. Look at the disparity. This just shows the ability of Wake to get to the line. Some of that's their offensive rebounding. They have made far more, 17 more free throws made by Wake than their opponent has even attempted. Johnson one for two. Miles controls, gives it to Fredette. Fredette, Miles, Tavernari, Kamard, and Abuo. Kamar. His ability to fly off of screens into his jump shot. Smith's floater won't go. Kamar with the board. He got the two quick fouls and had to sit on the bench. Is now trying to kick it into higher gear. Last touch by Ishmael Smith and Wake Forest. Al Farouk, Amanu back on the floor. James Johnson will sit down. And McFarlane back as well for the men in black. We talked about fatigue, the altitude being a factor. Last two minutes of the first half, Wake needs to, to excuse me, BYU needs to take advantage of that and push the ball and attack. Tavernari off the front of the iron, tipped by Kamar, not a bounds. Tavernari, who had sported the bald head for so long, started to let his hair grow out a little bit. Looks like some of the guys there went to Berkeley with in the uh, late 60s. Now his hair is not quite that long yet. A longer look for Tavernari than we're used to. Wake with the ball and three-point lead, McFarland. Good job getting the ball in the high post. They almost got Emanu down low. They've adjusted their zone offense here. Going to what we call kind of a runner look with one man running along the baseline. Blocked by Miles. Williams couldn't turn the corner. Second for Miles. And McGregor. We'll quickly check back in and they'll sit miles so he can't pick up his third. LD Williams has hit double figures in six of Wake's last seven games. Well, assistant coach Walt Corbin said that day in and day out, practice in, practice out, game in, game out, he's their most consistent player. One of two. Kamar. Quick release. That's the Cougars, two more. You're right, he gets rid of that thing so quickly, and he knows how he leans back a little bit, he gets a little more clearance from the defense that way. McFarland bounces right into McGregor, turnover, Kamard on the break, swatted. Abuo controls for debt. Wake demonstrating why they average six blocks a night. Well-coached, very athletic Wake Forest team. For debt, nowhere to go with it. Smith steals it. Unable to finish. Cougar ball.
45 seconds to go in the half, 35 on the shot clock. Coach Rose would probably want the team to take a little time off so that Wake doesn't have much clock to work with for a last shot. Kamard working on Williams. Amanu. Stolen for that. Mistakes here. We're going to start out with a pick. The freshman Amanu needed to know pull the ball back. We have the last shot. Then we get a foul of the three point play. And what we don't see on screen is going to be fouled up by a technical foul on McFarland for barking at the official right there. So here we have the technical fouls, shots being taken by Kamar, who's 82 at the line. And then Fredette will come to the line to try to complete the old-fashioned three-point play, all of which could give the Cougars a one-point lead with 20 seconds left in the half. And maybe this time, the freshman players for Wake will understand they should be going for the last shot. And Coach Rose doing a great job of getting his best defenders on the floor now with Rose coming on. He knows it's just going to be a defensive possession. It's 47-45, Coach. You had the scoreboard wrong. TV, we were right. We the scoreboard were right. in the house was wrong. I didn't want people to think you got short-seated on your Berkeley education. Shot clock's off, crowd is up. Clock is off, but crowd is on. Teague at the buzzer. Wake Force last field goal was at the 305 mark. We send you off to Bill Goldman and Marty Fletcher at our studios in Denver. Thank you, Rich, and welcome, folks, to the Denver studios of the Mountain. This is Halftime Live, and, hey, you know, we promised you a great game Whoa, between baby. BYU and Wake Forest. Marty, I would say, my observation is, these two teams have delivered. This is a great game. Oh, exciting basketball, back and forth, terrific plays, individual plays, also a great comeback by BYU. They got a little bit behind. Spider-Man had to sit with two fouls. He comes up big at the end of the half, but the, but the star, and I said it earlier, I'm, maybe the Cougar fans thought I was nuts. This is the next Danny Ainge. His game is like Danny Ainge. I'm not talking Austin Ainge, who was a very good point guard for BYU. I'm talking Danny Ainge, the, the two-way star, uh, offense, defense, can penetrate. Jimmer, jammer for dead. Had a big half. We're going to talk about him in just a minute, but we want to talk about another star. No, we do want to talk about Fredette. Let's put him on the marquee. Jimmer Fredette, talk about his first half. He's been matched up with Jeff Teague. Well, he's had, he's had, a, he's had a great half. 18 points. He, uh, he really got BYU off to a great start. Knocked down threes. There's Jimmer Jammer. And then, of course, the Brazilian bomber. There's Jimmer Jammer with a great drive down the paint. The kiss up three, he makes a steal at the end of the half, gets the three-point play, technical on McDonald. I mean, Jimmer Jammer for dead had a big-time first half. Tavernari threw in a, a three with some good rebounding, but Jimmer Jammer had a big-time first half. Coming out party for Fredette. 
Burnett last year came off the bench to average seven points a game. This year, a starter, 14 points per game. All right, the star for Wake Forest, you got to love the game of Jeff Teague, averaging 18 points per game, shooting 51% from behind the arc this season. He's delivered as well. Oh, he, he's outstanding. Great quickness, great explosion. He hasn't made a th uh, many, many threes tonight. There's well, the rainbow jumper, but he's so quick. He makes steals. He goes coast to coast. He forces the turnover, but there's the quickness we're talking about off the glass you talk about stats he shoots 80 84 percent from the foul line he can finish in the paint one of the premier guards in the country Jeff Teague is terrific Teague is terrific and he, he had a big first half he's a veteran for Wake Forest because he's a sophomore they also have the Demon Deacons they've got one of the top freshmen in the country in Al Farouk Amanu 13 points nine rebounds already this season and he's had a pretty good first half well Amadou can do I mean he has the long arms the great quick feet look at that quick move inside in in the little baby jump hook but, but he can also swat it down they they are a terrific shot blocking team they had six in this ball, uh, first half but uh, Amadou is is really very talented one of the premier freshmen in the country all right Marty we may have set a record we've been talking about BYU basketball for about five minutes we've not mentioned Lee Kamard yet where has he been in the first half well the spider-man had to sit on the bench and get his web together and, and that's what he did he had two quick fouls I'm sure he was jacked up for the game uh, but what a finish for Lee Kamar there's the great move watch the curl and the shot doesn't put it on the floor there's another no dribble just turn face and shoot it Lee Kamar had a a tremendous last five minutes and helped BYU get that lead now he's been in foul trouble and sometimes if you get in foul trouble early players can't come back but a guy like Kamar who's got veteran experience he's a talented player you get the feeling no big deal I'll just be rested for the second half and I'll make my run then well he, he made his run in the last five minutes I'm telling you he he made key baskets uh, against a very good def defensive team they hold opponents to 62 points yes Wake Forest scores 85 a game but they hold opponents to 62 but Lee came back re-entered the ball game and really gave BYU a big time lift. They look for him for the leadership. He does it in so many different ways, whether it's assist or shots. And here's a guy that plays the perimeter. You saw they were not layups. He's shooting 60% from the floor. That's like Shaq stats. I mean, when you, I mean, that's big man stats where it's all dunks and layups, but not the Spider Man. He puts the it puts you in his spider web and he knocks it down. This is a fantastic ball game. Should be a great second half as well. The score is great. Let's take a look at the stats. Uh, the halftime at 48-45. BYU. Both teams are shooting a terrific at a terrific clip. 51.5% for Wake Forest. 48% for BYU. BYU has been relying on that three-point shot a quite a bit more in the first half than Wake Forest. Will that be something to keep an eye on in the second half? Do you look for Wake Forest maybe bring it out? Well, no question. If if you're you're defending BYU, if you're the Demon Deacons, you got to get up and make them put it on the floor. You saw BYU and most of those three-point shots where where they didn't have to put the ball down on the floor. They were standstill shots. You did see turnovers, ten turnovers. Now. I'm, I'm singing the praises of Jimmer Jammer, but he did have four turnovers in the first half where he tried to do too much on, on a couple of occasions. But a great first half for both teams, and, and you will see, I think, the increased intensity with the big key defensively for BYU is when? When they went to their zone. Coach Rose doesn't like to play a lot of zone, but Wake Forest is so athletic and so explosive. He changed defenses, went to the zone, he cut down Teague's penetration that's what enabled them to get the lead BYU has the lead 48 45 at the break and we have come to our halftime on halftime live when we return we'll take a look ahead to game three of our mountain triple header it's the Mountain West opener for UNLV in New Mexico and if you have any questions for the coach Marty Fletcher you can do what I do log on to our website the mtn.tv click on our ask the analyst section then tune into our live shows to see if your questions get answered it's about teamwork, strength from unity, rising to the moment, reaching for greatness. It's where excellence becomes reality and team becomes the ultimate champion. This is Mountain West basketball. And this is where we play the mountain where the West is won. Coming up tonight, our day on the court wraps up when New Mexico faces UNLV at 830 right here on the mountain. 
Everyday value menu, huh? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I got a Junior Deluxe burger for a buck. A junior breakfast burrito. Yeah, it's a great deal for a dollar. I wish I knew that they had the everyday value menu, because mm -hmm. I would have brought more than a dollar. So you walk out of the house, you're like, ah, this will do me for the day. If it got my great-grandfather through the day, it should get me through the day. Have you heard of inflation, by the way? Yeah, yeah, it oh, makes okay. balloons go up. The new everyday value menu at Sonic. Got a buck? Then drive in for a variety of great food, like a junior breakfast burrito, or grab a junior deluxe burger for just a dollar. Sonic's new everyday value menu. All this for a buck each. Big O's looking out for the little guy with a big O bailout. We'll beat any competitor's advertised tire price by 5%. Plus, we'll get you covered with the best warranty in the biz. Six months, same as cash financing. And our healthy car special, just $29.95. Big O's got you covered with a Big O bailout. We got you covered at Big O. Remember when the most important thing in life was learning your ABCs? It still is. Won't you come and play with me? St. George, Utah. Everything from A to Zion. Close out your day on the court with Post Game Live. From courtside, they improved to six and one. They got a lot of confidence. They play tough. To the studio. They have just been dominant throughout this conference. I think they're the team to beat. Get the best highlights. Bailey for the big finish. And complete analysis. TJ goes eight for eight from the foul line. Right here after the game. Post Game Live, only on the mound. Get total coverage after the game with Post Game Live, right here on the mountain. A sellout crowd, a raucous crowd at the Marriott Center in Provo is watching as BYU leads Wake Forest 48-45 at halftime. All right, coming up later on the mountain, we've got UNLV taking on New Mexico. The Runner Rebels are riding a wave of confidence and momentum after winning at Louisville on New Year's Eve. Playing without Wink Adams, UNLV jumped out to a 10-0 lead and led it by 11 at halftime. The Cardinals did come back and take a lead, but Oscar Belfield Hit a circus layup late in the game, and the Runner Rebels got a defensive stop at the end, and they win at 56-55 to improve to 12-2 on the year. Now, New Mexico is also coming off a big win, two of them actually. The Lobos swept their arch rival New Mexico State in back-to-back -back games. After winning big at home, they held on and won in Las Cruces to beat the Aggies 68-66. Now they go from one hostile environment to another, and senior Tony Damage has told his younger teammates that the Thomas and Mac will be a, Thomas and Mac will be a much more intimidating setting. How the, the the fireworks, the everything, just the, the bed. Uh, Thomas and Max always hard, and, and uh, they, they'll see it. They'll see it. Hopefully, hopefully we'll have them ready for it. We know we got our hands full. Uh, we're going to have to play awfully well to give ourselves a chance. We're going to have to have a lot of good things happen for us, get some good breaks, and that's not easy uh, in the Thomas Mack Center. They're, they're a very, very good team. Uh, they're even a better team there. So uh, very tough opener for us in the league. All right, that game tips off at 8.30 Mountain Time. Let's go back to the game that we're watching right now, BYU and Wake Forest, and let's revisit the Fletcher file well, in this game. Let's pull it back out. You see, 12-0 versus 53-0. Hey, D up the Deacons, 51% from the field, 26% from a three-point line. Jimmer versus Jeff. This is a great matchup. Jimmer for debt, 18 points. Jeff Teague, 16 points, so it's almost a wash, but a great matchup. Then you talk about the front lines. Spider-Man and the Brazil Bomber. Lee Kamard came on late with eight points. Tavernari with five big points. But when you look at Wake Forest's front line, Amanu can really do it. So when you look inside the foul, we have a tremendous matchup. A lot of times when you have these national games, uh, the final score will be 48-45. <laughs> Not tonight. We're, we're having a wild shootout, a great performance by both teams, 48-45 and a half. This thing could go uh, triple figures, and I would love to see it. Amazing that Kamard and Tavanari have combined for 13 points, yet BYU has scored 48 in the first 20 minutes. That's all the time we have for Halftime Live. We'll take a break here and send you back out to Provo for the second half of the Cougars and the Demon Deacons right here on the mountain.
offense, sends it in, and a goal! On his heels, throwing it out there, what a catch! Mountain West Conference Tournament Champions. The MTN.TV, your new online home for the Mountain. Packed with new features and options. The Mountain Online keeps you connected to the Mountain West. Watch highlights of all your conference teams and episodes of your favorite Mountain shows. Plus, get the latest program guides by day, sport, or school. And sign up to become a Mountain Insider and get Mountain updates sent straight to your email. Come see what's new at the Mountain Online. Just a click away at the MTN.TV. One of the beautiful parts of Mountain West fans are you're on one side or the other. You can't be both on any of it. The geography of the Mountain West Conference, what really makes it interesting is you'll have a lot of kids whose parents went to an opposing Mountain West school. There's so many times you may look at that there could be a pair of brothers, you know, one who's at the Air Force Academy and one who's at the University of New Mexico. And having that geography and the people involved in it and those fans and the parents and the passion involved is what truly stands out. If you're a woman, you should know this. A recent study shows women are far more likely to get lung cancer from smoking than men, even if they smoke the same amount. And lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer deaths. If you smoke or a loved one smokes, get the help you need to quit now. The American Legacy Foundation and the National Association of Broadcasters want to help. Visit their website to learn more. College basketball on the mountain is brought to you by Dodge. See the all-new 2009 Dodge Ram Crew Cab 1500 at your Dodge dealer. Sonic, it's not just good, it's Sonic good. And by St. George, Utah. Discover St. George at Zion.com. Wonderful night on the BYU campus. A sold-out Marriott Center, better than 22,000. And the home team has the lead at the intermission by three. Rich Cellini, Dave Bullwinkel, coach who talked about high octane in this game. Hasn't disappointed. Not at all. Fast-paced ball game, entertaining. I said to the producer, I'd like to use the Telestrator. Game's too fast, we can't get to it. And part of the reason is because this guy's too fast. Jeff Teague, in a league by himself tonight, done it all. That's the first shot of the game, a three. He drives amongst the trees and finishes. He crosses over and shows that he can score with a floater. And then he breaks an ankle on the way to the basket for the old-fashioned three-point play, showing why he's an all-conference quality player. And Jimmer Fredette, he's matched him point for point. He's ahead 18 to 16 because he knocks him down from outside. You know how you can tell a guy's a great shooter? Fredette looks good when he misses, and goodness knows he looks good, looks good when he makes it, and he made a lot, even left-handed. And now he gets a nice pass, pulls up, gets Morgan the assist, 18, 16, look at these two guys. They're giving us all conference quality performances right here, and this has been a big time, high level ball game. Demon Deacon basketball to start the second half. McFarland. And no surprise, BYU comes out in a zone because they had such great success with their zone defense in the first half. It turned the game around. Abuo. With the drive, swatted inside by Amanu. Amanu blocked that one with his armpit. Oh, nice pass. Teague to Williams. Teague showing why his assist totals are up big from a year ago. He's become more unselfish. He doesn't just score, he assists for score. And it was a strong start to the first half for Wake Forest. Tavernari left alone. Coaches were calling out switch. Demon Deacons didn't do it. Well, I always used to say, you got to listen to your coaches. Had they listened, Tavernari wouldn't have gotten the three. Eight for Tavernari. Amanu. Still a big believer. Wake needs to get the ball into the paint. High post touches. There's a low. Good. Johnson. Miles. Fade away. Rolls home. Championship type atmosphere in the Marriott Center. Kamar. 
McFarland, another board. You mentioned McFarland. He's kind of the forgotten man. He's not as athletic as the rest of the front line, but he can play. Bua gets his own miss. Fouled by Chris Miles. It's a good job by Miles making sure Emanu could not get the ball to the rim. Now here we see a nice play, nice pick and pop. That's called a pick and a pop. You can see the pick, and he pops out, and the pass back. Tavanari did a good job of getting space from the passer. If you set that screen and pick and pop, you've got to get enough space and establish a passing alley so the passer, in that case, Kamard, can get it to you. Nice play by Jonathan Tavanari. Miles will sit down with his third personal foul. He'll be replaced by Gavin McGregor. So, as you called McGregor, the middle reliever will have to chew up some time. Just 18.06. Well, right in the second half. Right now, Miles got knocked out of the off the mound in the second inning. He needs to get back in soon. Tied at 51. For that. For that, the little floater off the front iron gets his own board. Fouled by Teague. Teague reached in and got caught. See, one, one of the things I would look to do if I was Dino Gaudio is not guard McGregor outside. Nice little floater, gets his own shot back. You know, one of the things that points out is that the person who best knows where the missed shot's going is the man who shot the ball. You gotta make sure you block out the shooter every time. Kamard inbound, Tavernari swiped away by Amanu. McFarland and Top and, and Kamard going after it. A little Mutt and Jeff action on the baseline here. Quick inbound and Tavernari makes the payoff. There was a little distraction there. Wake lost their focus. We've talked about how young they are. Focus is a factor. Amanu's three is good. Only his second three of the year. That's not exactly what Dino Gaudio wanted, but you know what? He'll take it. Lead is one. Ua. Blocked from behind and fouled by Amanu. So you look at the length of Amanu, those long arms. Length makes you quicker. He doesn't have to guard his man as closely because he can still contest the shot because of those long arms. He gets too close to him, he gets taken off the bounce, as Buo just did. First foul for number one, the freshman from North Cross, Georgia. Charles Abuo, a freshman as well for BYU. 72% from the line. McFarland will come sit down, replaced by Ishmael Smith. Oh, and they're going to their smaller lineup out here. Wake is. BYU, a perfect 10 for 10 from the free throw line. Amanu. Too quick for McGregor. McGregor needs to make sure he has his man shoot over him. Because Amanu's not a great shooter, don't let him get to the rim. And definitely a push. First foul for McGregor. He tries to put his knee in his rear and root him off the paint. Amanu back to Johnson. Saved by Teague. Teague kicks to the corner. Williams won't go. Kamard comes out of the pack. They're going to get Teague with the reach. Indeed, they do. Fouling negates hustle. Third it's, foul for Teague. It's nice to be hustling, but you can't pick up foolish fouls. Here they trap him, but the reach, the foul, definitely by T. Fouling the gates hustle. Kamard off the glass, rolls home. And a great decision by Kamard. He attacked Teague, who has, who, who's in foul trouble, with three, knowing that he wouldn't guard him hard because he wants to stay on the floor. Johnson has it stripped away. Abuo. 
right to the hoop. Dino Gaudio would like to take a timeout, but he's saying, can I wait to the media? Because there'll be a media timeout in 15 seconds. Bulo with the shove. Second year as the head coach. Abuo will sit down. Gave him a great lift starting the second half defensively and running the floor. Ten points for Charles Abuo. Rose, Emery, McGregor, Kamard, and Fredette playing defense for BYU. Cougars lead by five. Teague has yet to get on track in the second half. Williams draws contact and gets fouled on his way to the hoop. Fourth foul on Lee Kamard, five-point lead for BYU. Hilton Honors bonus points. Real value from your friends at Hampton. BYU versus Utah. The Deseret First Duel. The biggest game of the year. But that's not what this crowd is cheering about. It's rewards checking from Deseret First, a checking account that pays you 5.01% APY. There's no minimum balance, no monthly fees. We'll even pay your ATM fees. To qualify, it's easy. In fact, they're little things you're probably already doing. Rewards checking from Deseret First, proud sponsor of the Deseret First Duel. This is the girl that pushed the toy, that made electricity, that lit up the school. These are the BYU engineers that designed the toy that makes electricity that lights up the school. This is the university that taught the engineers that lit up the school and 217 faces. Brigham Young University, education to help the world. And this is a good place to start. Hi, I'm Marius Pate. And I'm Bill Dolman. Get the latest news, program guides, and video extras at The Mountain Online. It's total access at your fingertips 24 hours a day. Log on now to the Mountain Online at the MTN.tv. 15.56 to go in the second half. BYU leading number six, Wake Forest. We revisit our Dodge keys to the game. Well, first of all, this hasn't been done very well by Wake Forest. Too many made threes, made threes by BYU. Six in the first half clean the glass you know they've rebounded well but they're not owning the glass at halftime BYU had a push that's part of the reason they had the lead in the case of the Cougars we're out wake fast break points here's a key stat in the last minute 20 of the first half they outscored them seven nothing that's fatigue they didn't take care of the ball well they're gonna have to do that the second half to win Correction on the foul count as Kamard will go sit down. He has three personal, not four. And a 